Welcome to The Left Turn. My name is Dave Kaus. And I'm Chris Mercer. And yes, we are here to tell you everything and anything about cycling within the Sacramento Valley region and surrounding areas. We'd love to get this information out to you because you know what? Cycling is a community and we love our community in Sacramento, don't we, Chris? We do love it. Excellent. So tonight we have some really good stuff for you. We've got stuff about some local rides going on, some mm-hmm. actually events that happened this weekend, yeah, some good big results. Events, yeah. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, talking a little bit about the weather and what you should be doing for that, and just overall good stuff about cycling in Sacramento. So, first off, I kind of want to talk about um, the weather. It's right. getting chilly. It's getting cold, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Dave. Today, this first weekend, I really felt it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a little cold uh, Saturday morning out at the river ride there. Um, I dressed kind of full gear with leg warmers and arm warmers. Just remember, below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, you should be wearing arm and leg warmers. And maybe use a little bit of embrocation. Also, eyewear. I wear two day. Like Very important. Times, yeah, because yeah, uh, stuff gets flung up off those tires, especially in the rain. You can get stuff caught in your eye, and then that might be a trip to the ER. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yes, indeed. We've seen that before. Yeah, I'd yes, hate to see yeah. that. So um, when we're talking about clothing also, make sure that you always bring layers with you and layers that you can take off. So it's very important to be able to take stuff and put it in your pockets, and then when you need it, you can put it back on. And Josh will be here, I think, next week to talk more oh. about some of the clothing that he has from Vi13. What do you got for us, Chris? Well, we're talking about some stuff that's happening in the local scene right now, which is CX Racing, and it's an exciting event so far. So the Soccer Cross Series, as far as SAC is concerned, has an eight-series event. Um, it ends December 16th, but we're on race number three as of today, right, Dave? You Correct. were out there. Do you yeah, I was out at Lambie there? Park today, and let me tell you, that is a fun, fun, fun thing to be at. I saw a lot of people out there. It's a very family-oriented event. Um, Young kid by the name of AJ Snovel, I guess, got second today, which is fantastic. I'd love to see that kid do well. He's a good bike racer. Um, very, very fun individual. His family's really cool. Yeah, and actually, AJ was uh, second overall of the last week, too. Uh, actually, third overall of last week. I think he moved up today because of this, this performance. Actually. That's awesome. So any, any races coming up in the near future? Well, yeah, yeah we've got one coming up, and that's going to be next week's cyclocross. It's going to be featured out in um, Alberta, and it is going to be the Gibson Ranch Park. It's both Saturday and Sunday. So we've got some important changes to our website we want to talk about. First off, we have a list of all the local rides now. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Something I want to add about those rides. If you see a ride on there that you do that's exciting, let us know in our questions and comments, and we'll actually add that for you. Yeah, I I, I really like that. We we want to hear from you. We want to hear everything you have to say about our show, any suggestions you have. And we're absolutely willing to put stuff on, you know, if if it hasn't already been covered. So, later on in the show, we have a special guest. Uh, yes, we do. And a special guest that not only is a pretty darn good bike rider, but um, he can fill these glasses that we have empty here on the, on the table. <laughs> so, I'm going to go into the local scene. Okay. Now, when we're talking about bike racing and riding, yeah. let's talk about off the bike. Some things that people need to know about. So, there's some really good, friendly, cycling local restaurants around the area. A couple of them would be what? Crew? Crew, for definitely for sure. Awesome. Hook and Ladder. Hook and I've had a great experience there. Yep. Anything else? I'm going to take a little turn and suggest Bottle and Barlow. Bottle and Barlow is actually a really cool place. Yeah. Some very, really good handmade cocktails. And also, we can't forget about Trattoria. Oh, a lot of Trattoria, for yeah. sure. One of the best pizzas in town, and it's very cycling friendly. And of course, there are restaurants all over the Sacramento Valley area, so if you know of somewhere that you've been as a cyclist, mountain biker, cyclocross rider, please send your suggestions in. We're glad to plug them in for you. Now, we're talking about also training in the wintertime. Maybe you don't want to go outside and you want to stay inside. Yeah. A couple places you can do that. One that I like to go to is Die Fitness, downtown absolutely. Sacramento. This place is absolutely fantastic. These guys, both Michael Sayers and Julie Young, ex-professional riders, awesome people. They, have, they provide core training, Zwift classes for cycling indoors, all these different classes that you could think of indoors. We don't feel like going into the inclement weather. Yeah, and I like that because normally uh, one of them or the other are on those premises to get advice to. And another thing I love about them, drop-ins are absolutely welcome. absolutely. So so go to their website, dieendurance.com. Excellent place. They'll give you you an idea of what they got, what classes they have, and uh, you guys could, I think you'll really like it. Well, we're taking a left turn, and we're actually going to talk to my special guest host, Mike Moraz, from Moraz Brewing. Look at that. And I could use that right now. Brought you something. (laughs) I am very happy, sir. I'll give you half, because I have to take the other half. How's that? Sounds perfect. There you go. Excellent. Enjoy. Excellent. 
So this was our new 510 pale ale that we just canned this week. Hmm. So nice, easy bike riding beer. So not too heavy, not too light, but it's a great hoppy pale ale for the post ride. Really hydrated. Good. Yeah. So the reason why I brought you in here is um, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, your background in bike riding. And I want to talk a little about what you do during the day, because I know a lot of cyclists out there have day jobs. And so um, when we're talking about riders in Sacramento, there's a lot of people that go out on these group rides that have a day job and want to find an outlet for that day job. So first off, I wanted to ask you, what got you into bike riding? Like, when did you start? Well, I've always been into something with two wheels, so that was always the beginning. I lived out in the country, so it's motocross, bicycles, BMX stuff, anything that with two wheels um, that would get me playing in the dirt was pretty much where it started. Um, did a few, I lived down in the Bay Area, Vacaville, um, did a few mountain bike races down there. Uh, had kids, kind of got out of it for a while, and then got back into it when I moved up here a few years ago. Um, so. I've always loved the sport and wish I could have done it continuously, but sometimes life gets in the way and that's kind of part of your question there is like, you know, how do you fit it in and, and enjoy what you get to do when, when you can, so. Right, and, and so you're able to fit that in, you know, at any given time during the day or you're like your own boss or you, you, you know, it's a, there's a lot of work that you have and you just like, you got to plug it in where you can. Well, luckily for me, I am my own boss, but there's still a set amount of things that we need to do around the brewery. So it doesn't matter when they get done, if it's 2 a.m. or 9 to 5. So that's... So where do you like to ride? Well, I live in Eldorado Hills, next, just south of Folsom Lake. So that gives me the options to literally out my front door within 45 minutes. I'm, you know, got at least 10, 15 miles in. So that's a, a blessing for me. And um, if you have that option, it makes it great. If you don't, you got to spend some time driving there. But it's pretty much uh, Browns Ravine to Granite Bay, or even from Browns Ravine, which is um, the south part of the lake, to Skunk Hollow and Darrington, which is another, you know, pretty intense motor or, uh, mountain bike trail. So those are... Um, where I usually ride, my local backyard. Excellent. So, Mike, for our viewers out there, if they wanted to find out about some routes or some local mountain bike rides, et cetera, where would they go? I would have to say there's apps on the phone. Um, there's some Internet message boards and stuff. And your local clubs, uh, my local club's Fat Track, and we did a special beer. Um, I was looking for a can of that so I can promote them too. But um, they do amazing trail work and finding your local guys. But yeah, and that's not always the case. It's hard to find... Um, groups in your area if you don't have one but strava is a great one um that's another great app that you use for cycling i think if you're not using it you should be using it um it kind of gives you tracking of all your data and you can find other people on there um mountain bike projects another one um and if you like to hike um all trails is a great oh. app too both all three of those i Excellent. use um all the time so fantastic yeah. And so I understand that you have a, uh, a certain person that obviously you and I both know that um, transitioned from professional rider into a brewer. Can you tell us about, about him? Yeah. Can I drop his name? Absolutely. <laughs> Tori Phillips. is uh, He's my assistant brewer at the brewery. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he's training tonight or something. That's why he couldn't show up. But he's... Uh, he's been a great employee, an amazing guy. Um, he rides nonstop. I think he did a million feet of elevation last year. Um, it's unbelievable how much he rides. He's so, an, an amazing yeah. rider. I remember him when he was on Giant Strawberry, um, and he was being coached by Jesse Moore, who's a fantastic coach, yeah. by the way. Um, he is an incredible bike rider, but he does love his beer. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. he's apparently a really good brewer. Yeah, he does a really good job. He helped brew this beer we have right here. So, yeah, I'm super happy with him. So I think he's with um, Nutrition 24. Yeah, yeah Herbalife 24. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I believe can. so. So yeah. we're talking about brewery stuff. What's your day job? Oh, pretty much I call myself the head janitor. I'm always <laughs> the one doing all the cleanup and making sure everything's in line. And um, I still go to the store and buy toilet paper and paper towels and all that stuff, just like any small business owner that you have to do stuff. But we, um, we're a full manufacturing facility, so we've got to order projects, order pro product, products and projects that we do. I just got some yeah. new fermenters in, so it's uh, there's always something to do um, right. on top of making the beer and running the tap room and managing the employees. So it's so we're talking about beer. Tell us about Morass. Tell us how it started yeah. and where you're at now. Yeah, November 1st, um, five years ago, which is what a week ago. So pretty much we signed the lease for our building and we've been open and running um, for five years now. So um, it started out, you know, organically and small and progressively gotten bigger and bigger until we where we are today. So we have, you know, five fermenters and 
we pretty much brew four days a week and making beer and we distribute all the way from pretty much Santa Rosa, Bay Area, San Jose, you know, up to Placerville and, and beyond. So what are some of the favorite beers out there that people talk about all the time with Moraz? Well, we do IPAs and everything else. This is like the one, the pale ale we brought today. Um, but we're probably mostly known for our sour beers and our barrel age. Um, and we do quite a bit of those. So Welcome. yeah, we won quite a few awards this year with our sour um, and some of our sour program beers. So we're super happy about that. So it's nice, to be, nice to be recognized for those. I, I love that you're yeah. winning awards. Um, and if people wanted to come to the tap room, where is it located? We're at 2222 Francisco Drive, Suite 510, obviously named with the beer, um, up in El Dorado Hills. So, yeah, bring your bike. Um, you can bring anything you want. you got your mountain bike. we got road bikes. we got cyclocross. Um, there's some great cyclocross right behind the brewery. There's some great mountain biking, road bike. you got Malcolm Dixon. you got Salmon Falls. you got Deer Valley. All those are amazing places to bring the road bike. Nice rural roads, no traffic. Um, just a great place to start and finish. It sounds like it. And there's some local eateries around there, too. So if you get a little hungry, I know a couple times there's been a food truck outside or two. That, yeah. So sounds fantastic. So Moraz Brewing, don't forget to visit them. Cheers, Mike. Cheers. Thanks for coming on the yeah, show. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dad. Well, it's time for a left turn. We've got some viewer questions, Chris. Yes, we do. The first one is, how can I get one of my cycling products on the show, Dave? Good answer for that is just send it to us, or you can use our comment forms and let us know what you have, and we can feature a beautiful bike like we've got back here that can field. Excellent. Well, my second question is, who is Steven Seinhorst? Who is he, Dave? Well, he is a myth, a legend, but he was out there this weekend. He was indeed. And you know what? Congratulations, Mr. Seinhorst. You finally accomplished your mission. You finished the river ride. You actually did quite well. I'm very, very impressed. And our third question, which jumps right into the river ride, is it rain or shine? Do people show up? Absolutely, they did. There was about 35 people out there this Saturday yeah, on the was. A ride. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about the B ride, but the A ride there was. So please send in your viewer questions, anything and everything, to www.thelefttern.org. So I'm going to take another left turn, and I'm going to talk about a blast from the past that I ran into day, today. Um, his name is Ryu. Um, I ran into him in 1987. He was a cyclist from Japan. Um, he was here uh, uh, just learning how to ride a bike and had some other work stuff to do. Um, he was doing some importing and exporting of car parts, etc. But what he is doing now is he is actually the Japan or Japanese national team coach. He does um, track, and he also does Kieran racing. So really good to see you, Ryu. I want to hear more from you. Please send in uh, anything and everything you have of pictures. We'll have one of the pictures of him and I. We met at Temple Coffee today. By the way, fantastic coffee, but it was really, really good to see him. So cheers to you, Ryu. Welcome to the Turn. I'm Dave Kaus, and I'm here with a special guest. This is Tyler Yankee. Tyler, what's going on? How are you doing? Good, Dave. How are you doing? Good. So um, when did we actually meet in cycling? Well, my recollection is it's about 2004, 2005, and I tried to get back into cycling. I was heavily overweight, <laughs> and uh, I was doing a ride out in Roseville, and, uh, and, and you showed up on a ride as well, and I was riding my old oil me kit, and you yep. said, uh, where'd you get that? And I'm like, I rode for the team. That's how I got it. Yeah, he's, he, so Tyler has, um, actually, it's kind of cool. He rode with a friend of ours back in the day, Chad Gerlach and uh, Roberto Gaggioli from an old team. It was back, where were they based out of? Uh, right out of Boulder. It was Niwak, Colorado, and just outside of Boulder a little bit. Some others are uh, Eddie Gregus, Mike Carter, um, Steve Speaks, some old-time pros. Man, those guys, I, I love to, I wonder what they're doing these days, too. So, Tyler, the reason why I, I wanted to have you on the show is, you know, we, I see you out on these rides and races and so forth, but I know you got a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. You have a, a wonderful family, um, but there's something that you're doing now that um, we talked about earlier. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Yeah, so through our data-driven athlete uh, cycling team, we've kind of decided to start our own podcast. It's called Between Two Wheels, and our idea is we're, we just do commentary on the world of cycling and don't take ourselves too seriously and try to base it out of NorCal. That's why I actually came out and uh, talked to you tonight because uh, you have a similar idea and go to some races, uh, make jokes about ourselves and don't take ourselves too seriously and yeah. just kind of throw out what we ha have with cycling. Right, right, right. And so um, do you, what do you see in the future for this podcast? 
Oh, for us, it's uh, we're going to make a lot of money off it, Dave. That's the whole concept. No, right, I'm, right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, the only money that's being made is whoever I'm buying the product from and going out there. Uh, we just kind of want to express how we feel about cycling. And in NorCal, you know, there's a void in NorCal of cycling news, I believe. I think NorCal yeah. cycling news used to yeah. be something here. It's kind of gone by the wayside. So we go out and we try to interview people at the races. I, I bring people in and we do some long form inter, you know, interviews. And that's kind of where we have going. Excellent. And you know, you touched on something a little bit ago, data driven. Can you explain that to your viewers what data driven is? So data driven athlete is the kind of the brainchild of Nate Dunn. Uh, he's a coach in the area. And it's his whole idea is data driven. So a lot of power analysis. So he's a coach. And then we've started a team from that. And uh, our team doesn't do much as far as getting in, in uh, sponsors. We just kind of self-fund, and we just love to be able to race, and that's kind of the whole concept of that. Oh, that's awesome. So if you guys are looking for some good coaching and so forth, data-driven athlete sounds fantastic to me. Tyler, I hope to see you out on the rides here soon. I know it's cold. I know the wintertime is fun, but river rides, I always love to have you out there because you're always a great wheel to follow. Uh, thanks, Dave. And uh, we do try to make it down to the river ride on occasion. And you're always welcome to come up to Folsom, do the Copy Republic ride or the Wednesday ride. I know it's a little hilly, but... You're always welcome. I know, me being that Flatlander guy, you know, but uh, I might have to bring Mr. Maximilian Shackman up there to do some of these Coffer Republic rides. I think he'd really enjoy that. Uh, you mentioned Tori earlier, and yes. um, he's been taking our KOMs. I'm sure Shackman would do the same. So. Yeah, Mr. Maximilian Shackman will be here November 17th through December 2nd. World Tour rider for Quick Step. All right. Anyways, thanks, Tyler. Appreciate, Appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you again. Thank you. We're the left turn. We're everything and anything about cycling in Northern California, Sacramento Valley, and surrounding areas. And I just want to take a moment okay. and actually thank our sponsors. Okay, Dave. Number one sponsor on my list is Studio of Cameron Walker. For more information about his artwork and any pieces you want to look at, you can go to the Tim Collum Gallery. There's a nice feature piece on all of his stuff. Really fantastic. They are beautiful watercolor, Dave. And EP No, really good supplement. It's actually very healthy and it's very good for you. And Sea Sucker Bike Racks, they suck in a good way. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in our next show.